I'm so excited to be here, everyone. I know it's virtual and we all wanted to be in Madrid, but it is so exciting to come to you from uh, Raleigh, North Carolina. I'm Nithya Ruff and I'm with Comcast and I'd love to share with you how we are uh, making the journey in InnerSource and some of our lessons learned in InnerSource. So with that, let me switch to my slides and I will share with you a little bit about uh, how we're doing and uh, what our story is. Bear with me while I bring the slides up. So it's, it's important in any journey, right, to start with how you got into open source and how you started working in open source because uh, open source often fuels the inner source journey. And I was lucky enough in 1998 to get involved in open source at Silicon Graphics where we started using open source in our servers and we started shipping open source. And so we had to kind of work in the early days on what our open source strategy was going to be. And that led to a number of other assignments where I had an opportunity to work with some fabulous teams at Tripwire where we open sourced the product, at Wind River where we created an open sourced embedded distribution. And then I got to run the open source program office at Wind River uh, at Western Digital SanDisk. Another thread that you see in my life is working with open source foundations and projects. I'm passionate about diversity in open source and di diverse ways of contributing to open source. So I've been very involved in that. And I sit on the board of the Linux Foundation driving uh, community engagement as well as diversity. And, and really, I will talk to you more about our Comcast journey into open source. So a little bit about Comcast. A little bit about Comcast in this slide. Um, Comcast is a worldwide media and technology company. We are primarily in the United States, but we do have a footprint in Europe through Sky TV. And we are also a content distributor and provider and creator through NBC Universal, DreamWorks, and uh, other content uh, you know, companies that are part of the Comcast family. So it's a very large company that both distributes media, but also provides internet services. As such, you can imagine, we build our products, our network services and customer equipment that sits in customer homes with a lot of software. So we are a huge technology company and much of the software is open source. And we also use a lot of software tools, as you can imagine, to speed the innovation process and create compelling customer experiences. And we are very large, as I mentioned, and every team is highly autonomous and has the freedom to move as fast as they need to, to serve our customers. But yet there's a, a great deal of interconnection between the teams and our systems. And uh, we also use common tools for hosting our software and also to collaborate across the company. And we're very, very serious about working faster, more cost-effectively, better, and also attracting you know, happier development teams and creating an environment where development teams feel happy to work here. So how did our open source journey begin? In the very beginning, I would say 2006 and before, we were highly dependent upon vendors and we purchased uh, solutions from vendors. And somewhere between 2006 and 2007, eight, we realized that if we were to create compelling customer experiences, we need to create and we need to be in the control seat of how we create our solutions and platforms and applications so we can serve our customers better. And frankly, the environment also was becoming a lot more competitive and you were seeing some new technology companies coming into media distribution and media uh, and entertainment. And so both the environment as well as the need to serve our customers better helped us pivot to becoming more of a software company. So by 2011, you found 
that not only were we creating our own platforms like the X1 platform, but we were using a lot of open source. And so we had to set up a compliance function and also approve anything that was contributed back, the licenses that we worked with, et cetera. By 2014, there was a much more formal open source advisory council that advised developers in making contributions. And we did a ton of different contributions in this time frame. And I would say between 2014 and 2016, for example, we uh, contributed and started a project around creating a common set-top box standard called the RDK project. We also contributed to the Apache Foundation a content distribution network. And these were original projects that are very core to our company, which we released to the open source because we believed that this was the right thing to do, that others could find you know, use from these projects. We started joining foundations like the Apache Foundation, the Linux Foundation. And it was in 2017 that we created the open source program office. And I joined the company and I already saw a thriving, thriving open source practice here. But then I had a chance to build a wonderful team of open source um, advocates and allies and ambassadors. And really my task in Comcast is to scale the open source across the entire enterprise. So a little bit about the open source program office itself. Every company which starts an open source program office does it a little differently. In our case, um, it is part of our CTO office. And I talk about six C's that an open source program office is responsible for. We communicate and evangelize inside and outside the company. We guide teams in how to consume open source in contributing properly to open source and getting engaged with open source communities and collaborating with them. We really advocate a culture of collaboration and open source inside the company, and very importantly, uh, helping them comply with license obligations. I think that's an extremely important element of an open source uh, practice is to comply. One of the first things we did when we opened the open source program office was to set up our external portal, if you will, so that we could, if you will, put a, a sign up saying we are now open and we are part of the community. We want to be transparent about what we are doing and we want to engage with you. So if you go to this portal, you'll find all of the projects that we've released You'll find our stance on open source. What is our philosophy on open source? You'll even find job openings in the company that involve open source. And so it's been a really wonderful way uh, for people to engage with us. As you can see, they can contact us here and ask us questions and you know, even raise issues. So this is a, a wonderful kind of window for us to engage with the community. So as you can imagine, uh, starting an open source office and working in open source as a company, we very soon realized that open source software is really pervasive in every field from IoT to supercomputing to cloud, and it innovates really fast and it's fast moving. And it is transparent, it's collaborative. And we said, what if these characteristics could be brought inside the company and we could do our internal projects in the same way, you know, adopt the characteristics that make open source successful. So what if our teams could contribute to projects and accept con contributions from other departments and divisions? How could these teams empower their downstream users and actually invite users to contribute to the project rather than just be passive users? How could we invite other teams to reuse work that's being done? As you can imagine, we are a very large company and there's a lot of different libraries and tools being created across the company. So what if we could reuse some of these tools instead of reinventing and frankly, become a better development culture, but become a more collaborative and open development culture. So 
this was kind of the aha moment for us, learning from our open source work and saying, let's bring this inside the company and thereby, frankly, inner source was born inside the company. One of the first projects that we started in inner source was called Vinyl DNS. And this was a project that provided uh, common DNS services. It's a self-service DNS um, and it streams, um, you know, helps teams use DNS throughout the company. And it was being used by many, many different teams in the company. And there was a very small team that was maintaining it and they were finding it difficult to keep up with all of the requests and support all of the users. And they also had intentions of going open source. So one of the first things we did was to kind of work with the team and say, hey, what if you could get your users to work with you and not just file issues, but actually you know, fix those issues themselves and fix the bugs themselves rather than depend upon you. And all of these mechanisms we'll help you do will also help you kind of become a better open source project when you actually go open source. So we worked with the Vinyl DNS team to create community. So set up meetings with their users, uh, train their users, provide better documentation. And we put it in a neutral organization on GitHub Enterprise because we felt the teams would be more apt to uh, contribute to the software if it was in a neutral organization versus in this department's uh, GitHub org. And that was the beginning of inner source. And this project then went on to successfully create uh, a community within the commun company and it has gone open source. And once they went open source, um, they were very successful in creating a community because they had practiced it inside the community. So to me, inner source helps us do better open source in the end because you can stage the project and then you can go successfully outside. And, and it also helped us learn how to create community inside the company with downstream users. And clearly, you know, when we started trying to spread the word of inner source across the company, there were a number of people who had objections. Um, we would say, can you please open up your repo to other users and other uh, teams to contribute to your project? Or can you help them use your project more effectively? People would say, I cannot open this repo because I have secrets or passwords or elements that I can't open. And then, you know, if you sometimes create code in a hurry and you never created it to be open, you probably are not very happy with your code. And so people didn't want others to see their code. Uh, they also felt that they may have architected it in a very monolithic way. And so they would have to re-architect the code to open it up. They would need to create more documentation and standards and they didn't have time to do it because they were just building and releasing in a hurry. And you know, some people would say, I don't want to have to review code from someone who's not part of my team and you know, someone who doesn't know my project very well. And, and you know, there's no time for my team to uh, contribute to others' projects. They have enough work to do in this team and I don't want them to go contribute to other teams. So there were a bunch of objections like this and we had to kind of work through and educate people on some of the benefits versus these objections. So there began the organic growth of inner source within the company. So two of the team members uh, in the open source program office, particularly Sheila Sebi in the beginning days would do a lot of webinars, would do a lot of awareness building, would share success stories and create kind of a, a demand, if you will, an awareness of the fact that inner source was something that they could do. And then we would get these inquiries from teams throughout the company who would say, hey, I think I have a candidate for inner source or I have something that 
uh, could use, um, you know, a restructuring and opening. Uh, can you help us do that? Which then led to consultations. So Sheila and then later Brittany Istanis would consult with the teams and say, tell us what you're trying to do and you know, we will help you restructure the project such that you can build community. And when they were doing this, they started kind of seeing a pattern, you know, which teams are a good fit for inner source inside the company and which are not. So inner source, you know, is really ideal if there are other teams who could benefit from this being open, right? This project being open, either they have users downstream or, this is such a common library or a common platform that others could use, or perhaps they build applications for your platform and thereby opening it up would enable them to understand the APIs better, uh, understand how to build the application on the platform better. So that's a common characteristic. Leadership support was extremely important. If your leader didn't support you doing this because you have to spend some time either contributing or reviewing and accepting contributions, it's hard to do. So the, the second two points you can see is really dependent upon having independence, having support from leadership to do it. And since our tool is GitHub Enterprise and it's predominantly used by a lot of teams, having the project in GitHub Enterprise made it extremely easy to open it up to other teams. So if you used a different source repository, it often was more difficult. And then of course they had to have documentations and guides so people could actually contribute to the project. We also developed a number of partnerships uh, working with IT who supports GitHub Enterprise. Security was important, so we knew how to open it up securely. Our strategic architecture team often uh, helps us understand how to structure projects better. And of course, partnering with the inner source commons, learning from others who have done this, and the to-do group, which is a group of OSCO leaders, um, was extremely helpful for us. Where we are today is we are trying to productize what we have done organically throughout the company, and we're trying to scale it throughout the company. So one of the first steps we're doing is, is kind of uh, creating checklists for uh, consulting and so that we can be very repeatable and we can be very consistent in how we help teams. We're developing metrics for understanding adoption and impact of inner source. And then we're also tagging repos that are inner source in the company. And then we're sharing success stories and case studies so that it then inspires other teams to you know, go do this. And there are a number of things that worked for us. Um, I think from an awareness perspective, just sh sharing case studies, providing incentives to early developers, writing blog posts really helped. From a community perspective, uh, targeting potential users, uh, making it easy to contribute, creating a communication vehicle like Slack and holding meetings was extremely useful. And from a practices perspective, I think all of you know this, having good documentation, uh, backlog of issues, you know, coming back to users immediately and giving them some form of acknowledgement and feedback is important and targeting who would be a good contributor to this uh, is extremely important. So as you can see, a tremendous number of benefits for us. We felt that the code reuse improved People were working faster. Uh, we had better recruitment and onboarding of new developers. Um, we were breaking down silos across a number of organizations and locations. The code quality improved. Um, it was easier to then move to open source. If you were practicing this inside the company, we could do it outside the company. Net net, I think it really created such an improvement in development practices in the teams that adopted open source. I talked about Vinyl DNS and Helio was another project where two teams were creating something similar and by combining their efforts and creating around one project, they were able to do code reuse and do, reduce duplication. 
So let me end by saying inner source is truly cultural transformation and it requires acceptance on the part of leadership, on the part of developers, and it does take time to build that and build part participation. And working together and collaborating on projects really elevates the software development culture in a company to the next level. And we're very, very happy that we are doing this and then taking it to the rest of the company. So thank you for your time. Thank you for the opportunity to work with you and be here today in Madrid and share our story. Hope you have a great rest of the inner source comments.